I created this deck of playing cards and these are the reasons why I designed it the way that I did. Let's start with the tuck box. The front of the tuck box has these two interlocking D's design. Was that a part of the game plan originally? Not at all. Originally it was going to be a wraparound design where it says descendants and a bunch of random triangles around the rest of it. But then when I was talking to my designer who also created the XQ49 playing cards, he sent me over a few ideas and one of those was that interlocking D's design. Now that design is what was on the front and the back, but on the long edges of the tuck box you have a down arrow and an up arrow. And the reason behind that is because it's supposed to symbolize what the motto for this deck is, which is no matter how far you descend, you can always look up, which is why we got the descend and the looking up on the sides of the tuck box. On the top, I originally just wanted it to say descendants. Then once again, Thorsten Schmidt came in clutch, where he sent me over this ambigram. And if you don't know what an ambigram is, that's when you can read a word one way, but then when you flip it upside down, you can still read the exact same word. So it says descendants right now, then when you flip it, it still says Descendants. And that's pretty dang sick. On the bottom, you have some ad copy for me, my designer, and then USPCC, which is where we're gonna print through. And it also has the Card Perfect Magician logo, which is that right there. And it also says V1 in green. Another thing with this tuck box is the inner flap says, look up, which just goes back to the motto. And the last thing about the tuck box is this actually is not going to be the color we use. It'll be a neon green. Speaking of neon colors, this is the back design, which will also be neon green. And if you need something to compare it to, think of Zone Green playing cards, the Noxport Green playing cards and slime fontaines. If you know any of those decks or have any of those decks, that's what you're going to be looking at. Now United States Playing Cards Company can't print both borderless decks and neon inks because if they do, it'll chip around the edges. So I had to choose either keeping it with this green and letting it be borderless or get the neon green and keeping it bordered. And for this deck, I wanted to keep that neon green. Now, why did I create the back design the way that I did? That's a much longer story for another time. I actually released that video a few days ago, so at the end of this one, it'll be right here. For the number cards, we decided to redo all the pips and indices and change the reds to green. I always thought it'd be weird to have a green back design and then red and black on the faces. And especially for a cardistry deck, I don't like it when it's completely standard. And when Thorson sent me these ideas for the pips and indices, I 100% hopped all over it. I always knew that I wanted custom pips for that, but I had no idea what I was getting into. One thing I did always know is I wanted the three aces to be enlarged, because I love it when the aces are separated from the number cards. It should go number cards, the three aces, and the court cards, and then the ace of spades. And speaking of the court cards, I also knew I wanted them to be fully custom. I still wanted them to be recognizable, because I do love to perform magic and I still want to be able to use this deck for magic, but it's definitely not going to be its main intention. Plus, if my friends want to play card games with them, I don't want them to be deterred from doing that just because the courts are so overly customized. And this is what we ended up coming up with. It's your same basic course design that you're normally used to, but with a few small changes. All colors were stripped away and just left with black and green. You do have a little bit of the back design in each of the court cards, and you'll notice that all the court cards are actually looking up, just to reinforce the motto once again. The other thing that I always wanted to do was put my channel logo somewhere in the deck. Originally I was thinking of doing something like putting it on the Joker, but then eventually we ended up hiding it inside the King of Hearts. And the reason behind choosing the King of Hearts is because eventually when I create my own magic deck, we're actually going to have custom faces on that as well. And when I do that, I'm going to be on the King of Hearts. Now we've got the two ad cards and then my two favorite cards. The first ad card on the front has no matter how far you descend, you can always look up, which I might have said a couple of times during this video. And the other side has an up arrow and Psalm 30 verse 3 in the international standard version on it. This is a way so I can share my testimony and keep the motto and have the word descend all in one place. The second second ad card has some of my socials on it, and if you're not following me on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, you definitely should. And the other side originally was not meant to be this, at least not to the extent that it was. I always wanted it to be where you could draw on this card, but the difference is you're going to be winning free playing cards out of this. So I came up with the hashtag, hashtag you descend. That way, when you draw on this playing card, you can then post it on Instagram and I'll have all of them in one place, which originally was all I was going to do. And then when I made a video, I think it was me just unboxing these playing cards for the first time. I was literally just going through it and I came up with an idea on the spot. If we use your design and you were the first person to post that design, you get a free deck of that card that you designed on the house, which I think is pretty dang cool. Now, before we get into these next two cards, there's one other thing. The paper it's going to be printed on. Now, most people are used to a normal bicycle deck of playing cards, but we're going to be taking the same paper that bicycle playing cards are printed on and actually pressing it down even thinner, which is going to make it absolutely effortless to do any cardistry move. Then you're going to have the duplicate jokers. Now make playing cards where I printed these prototypes only can print 55 cards, which is why I only have one here. Originally, I had literally no idea what I wanted from the jokers. I was just going to use my channel logo. Then as me and my designer were talking about it, I decided I wanted to have something with an actual jester hat. But I was nervous because the jester hat is curved, and the back design is a bunch of straight lines. And truth be told, I'm still not sure how he came up with this, but he managed to combine the two beautifully. And for the Ace of Spades, this was not my idea originally at 
all. Originally, I was gonna have another back design on the face of the Ace of Spades. So we're gonna take the back design, including the border, paste it onto the other side, and then have a large spade logo cut out. So you'd have to use the negative space to see the Ace of Spades, which I still like as a concept. But man, when he sent me this, I went crazy crazy enough that I got it as a hoodie and I'm very happy I did it because this thing is super comfy and if you want to pick up these cards for yourself you can actually check out the Kickstarter page right here and if you want the full story of why I created the back design you can check out the video right here I'll catch you guys in the next one make sure to subscribe for more descendants playing cards and playing cards content this is CPM signing off